All right, so first we're gonna look down here at the right-hand corner of your paper. We're gonna define these couple pieces, okay? So, um, so this is just, just a little map, and so this is gonna kinda help some of you guys out, especially starting out with these conversions, because I think the biggest thing people struggle with is where do the heck do the numbers go, and blah, 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 and those railroad tracks get crazy. We're only dealing with two boxes right now, all right? It's gonna go all the way to four. So you gotta, you gotta make sure you're getting yourself comfortable with it. Practice is what's gonna help in these next two chapters. Um, but what I do need you to be working on, especially on the homework over the weekend and stuff like that, is that you need to get yourself away from the map. You need to just be using math. You do have to, <laughs> you're gonna have to use math at one point, all right? And you're gonna have to use dimensional analysis and cancel out units. But, so I'm gonna be modeling that a little bit more in the examples that we're gonna do. But just know you have this map to help you out. So let's just write a couple definitions that we need on here, okay? So particle city up in the top right corner, particle city we use for things like formula units. Okay, so we have formula units. Um, and so for short, we might be putting, um, you'll see FU after some numbers, okay? <clears throat> Just so you've seen it before, okay? I know it's weird. All right, but we use formula units for things like our ionic things. So um, if I had calcium chloride, which is CaCl2, it means one calcium, two chlorines, and I'm only talking about one of those units. And that's why we use it for ionic things, because we know that that exists as a whole crystal lattice. So we would be using formula units. That is a particle, okay? We would be talking about things like molecules. So when you're given a word problem, if you see the word molecules, and it's asking you how many molecules there are, that's what they're talking about. It could also be used for atoms, okay? <clears throat> All right, so any of these funny little chemistry words, if they pop up, like saying that you have to solve for them, just know that it, it's all dealing with particle city or particles, okay? Now, um, taking a step back from the map real quick, because I forgot to start with this, you notice that Moulton is in the center, yes? Awesome, all right. And then how many different areas are there around it? Three. three. How many different roads are there? Three. There's only three, meaning you can't travel from Graham Land to Particle City. You have to go through Mole Town, okay? So you are limited to where these, where you can travel, all right? You always have to convert to a mole. All right, so in between Particle City and Mole Town, when you're trying to travel between those two, you have to ride on the Avogadro Express, okay? The Avogadro Express. Avogadro. V. It's a V. Avogadro Express. It says like Mhm. Okay. So everybody wrote down the word. Avogadro Express is a little train. So what that means for you is that if I'm traveling from Mole Town up to Particle City, if I'm going that direction, then I am going to be having Avogadro's number at, on top. And just so you know, this is on the inside of your periodic table. You don't have to memorize it. Okay. Avogadro's number is on top. One mole is on the bottom. It is a conversion just like the three definitions we wrote yesterday in that first box, right? We said 6.02 times 10 to the 23, that's a mole. Molar mass, that's a mole. Um, and then 22.4 liters, that's a mole. That's all that we're writing right now, okay? All right, if I'm traveling from Particle City to Mole Town, you flip those two. So you're gonna have one mole on top and you'll have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 underneath, okay? Can we see that? Okay, and so like I said, at least for your homework, 
or to start out, use this map, and then you'll know where the numbers go. You just plug them right in. You figure out where you're going, who you're, where you're coming from, and that way you put the numbers in the right spot. And then eventually you'll, you'll learn the actual math part of it, okay? All right, so we're gonna look, next we're gonna look down here to Volumeville. So I'm gonna kind of zoom in here. So remember, Volumeville is limited to gases. That's why it's a farm, there's little pigs and they're farting all the time. Okay, so in order to get to Volumeville, we would fly on the B22.5 all right, the B-22.4, yes, it is a bomber plane because that was the only thing that was catchy. All right, so we have the B-22.4, okay? It's a plane, and if you are traveling from Mole Town to Volumeville, so if I'm traveling this direction, you're going to have 22.4 on top, one mole on bottom. If I am traveling the opposite direction, so if I'm traveling from Volumeville back to Mole Town, I will have one mole on top, 22.4 liters underneath. Okay? So if you notice, wherever you're traveling to, that goes on top. Do you see that on both examples so far? Wherever you're traveling to, wherever that arrow is pointing to, that is who goes on top. The other number goes on the bottom, okay? What, what number is stuck with mole, by the way? Two one. We're always defining one mole, right? With something else that is equal to that one mole, all right? So just a couple hints to kind of help you when we start getting the calculations. All right, so our other place is Gramland. And Gramland, um, Gramland, this one has like a, it's a bigger name, so I'm going to write it outside the arrow. This one you would ride the molar mass carriage because it's a castle. <laughs> That's my best explanation. So just like in all the little Disney movies of princes and princesses, they always ride in a carriage. That's why I say that. All right? So molar mass carriage. So if I am traveling to Gramland, okay, then that means that you are going to have, um, what ends up on top? Oh. No. no. Oh. Where you're traveling to. So grams, right? Oh. So you're going to have molar mass measured in grams on top, one mole on the bottom. If I am traveling the opposite direction, so if I'm traveling to mole town now who ends up on top mole. mole there you go now you're gonna have one mole on top molar mass in grams on the bottom did we learn about molar mass yes. some of y'all did yesterday when you did your homework okay so it's everything from the homework yesterday that's a molar mass okay it just the what uh, the math portion. Now I understand the question. Yes. Um, what's his Avogadro? Avogadro is a scientist. And so oh. we'll learn a lot more about him, especially around gas laws. But he's get, he has that special number. So the 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay, so now let's go ahead and start looking at some of the math. Just to, just a heads up, the first example I do take my time on, and we're going to take a while, okay, just to kind of cover everything, and then after that I kind of move through them a little bit quicker. So just deal with it on the first one. Sorry, ahead of time. All right, at the top of your page, you see the little reminder that I gave you. Words down to the right. That's what we did at the beginning of the year. Because words divided by words is equal to what? One. One. Good. Okay, just like if I say five divided by five is equal to one, right? So if we have our words, we're canceling them out, but they don't just disappear. They turned into the number one, so we don't care, okay? So um, remember that this is what you need to come back to, okay? Come back to um, doing the words down to the right so that you just convert into what you want on top. Um, but the map will at least get you started. All right, 
The other thing we're going to be focusing on in all these questions are your sig figs. So we're going to be reviewing some of those sig fig rules about the zeros that y'all forgot. Okay? So make sure you're paying attention to that. All right. So example one. <clears throat> it says how many atoms are in 2.5 moles of aluminum? Okay. So when you read the problem, it says how many atoms are in 2.5 moles of aluminum? A habit that I want you to get yourself into is you circle where we're starting which is always the one that's attached to a number, and you need to underline where we're going, okay? So for example one, where are we starting? What area on that map are we starting in? Uh, oh, I got this, Miss. I, I got this. Mole Town. So we are starting in Mole Town, and we are traveling to Particle City. Particle City. Good. So, okay? All right, so when you're approaching the problem, we take that 2.5 moles, so we're gonna put it into the little railroad tracks and build those railroad tracks off of it. We take that whole, the, sorry, the part of the words, we're gonna bring those down to the right, okay? We're gonna put that in that box down to the right. We're gonna end with what we want on top. Now we fill in that information. So we have, we need the definition that relates particles to moles. That is using Avogadro's number. Okay? Or look over at your map. What does the arrow that is pointing from Mole Town up to Particle City say we should have done? Uh, right. Avogadro's number over one mole. Right? So do you guys see how to use it for the homeworks? Okay. So once we have that, we would multiply it across and we would divide by the bottom. So there are tons of people who are really still struggling with the calculator. So this is going to be the one problem that I write these on. So if you are that person, please write down the calculator help that I'm about to write down. So you would do 2.5. You would hit the multiplication sign. Then you would type in 6.022. You would hit second x to the negative 1 because that has the ee -E on top. And then you would type in 23. Sorry, I'm going to have to write it on the next line. 23 push equals, and then we would divide by each thing on the bottom. So automatically, don't even, don't start a new thing. You would just push equals, then push divide. And on the bottom, we have a 1, and then we push divide again. We would do for the other one, and now we're going to push equals. So I need everyone right now to type it in using that method and make sure you are coming out to the answer that is on your page. So I'm gonna pause this. I'm gonna answer all your questions that you guys are raising your hand about. So now that we've gotten that, we've calculated the 1.51 times 10 to the 24 atoms. So now we actually have to be paying attention to sig figs. So right here, the 2.5 that was given to us, how many significant figures did that have? Two. Two, so we needed to have our answer in two sig figs. So what I expect you to do on all your calculations is you get the calculator answer and you write it down and then I want you to convert it to your sig fig answer. So this, we only want two sig figs, so we would round that down to 1.5 times 10 to the 24. Yes, technically. Okay? Yes, because the question was asking about aluminum. Because it was asking about aluminum. I don't know why they're asking about aluminum. All right, so please try example two on your own. And if you've already done it, go ahead and look ahead to example three, or you can actually be looking at the, the, the paper that I gave you um, during the warm-up time. If you turn it to the other side, it says mole particle conversions, and you can start doing some of those as practice. Okay, I'm going to come around and answer any questions, and then we're going to move on. We're going to do example three through five, and then I'm done talking. You should be getting, by the way, 
You should be getting 3.0 times 10 to the 24 on this next one. So work through it till you get that answer. Okay, so moving on to example three. I changed this screen. I'm just going to zoom in right here. There we go. All right. So for example three, um, we have what is the mass of a piece of aluminum that contains 0.5 moles of aluminum? So we are starting wherever the number is attached to. So I'm circling that. I'm going to underline where we're going. So this one, where are we starting at on your map? No. Mole Town. Now we're going to Graham Land. Okay? All right. So you would start with what they give you, which is 0.5 moles of aluminum. Create your railroad tracks. Okay? Real quick, let's handle sig figs. How many sig figs are in that number? One. One. Yes. I was about to say two, and I was like, no, never, never. All right, so it's only one sig fig, which is going to totally destroy our answer. <laughs> it's terrible rounding. You should never have just one sig fig. That's awful in science. All right, so moving on, though, that is what we were given, so we're going to go with it. Uh, so I put my 0.5 moles of aluminum, take those words, bring them down to the right. Notice we are not bringing the number down to the right in any of these examples, just the words, okay? So I have moles of aluminum down here. I'm traveling to Gramland, so grams goes on top. This definition right here of a relationship between mass and moles is the molar mass, which is what we did yesterday. So one mole of something is its molar mass that you find on the periodic table. And that would be the same thing if there was a compound, just like what you did in your homework last night. Okay, so just know it, it carries for both. So you can either just elements or you can do the whole thing. All right. So now we would um, set this up, and you would be multiplying 0.5 times this 26.98, push equals, divide by 1, divide by 1, and you would get 13.49. Wait, that number on the top, it should just be, uh, what's it called? Molar mass from the periodic table. Oh, oh, oh. Yes. Okay. All right. So now we have to take our answer, and we only want one sig fig. There's four right now. So... We're going to start from left, travel to the right, and you count up how many sig figs they want. We only want one, so we're going to underline this guy, check the one behind it. What does that change this number to? What are we rounding to? One is not the same thing as 13. What is the better answer? 13. Thir Thank you. All right, so, so another thing, so if we have that one sig fig, what you would do is you would... Underline the first one because that's your sig fig that you're going to change. Check the guy behind to see if you round up or stay the same. We stayed the same and then fill in whatever you've got until that decimal place with just a zero. So just know we can't put any decimal on this or else we would make it significant. That is one significant figure right there. Trailing zeros don't count if there's no decimal. That's the rule. Okay? If you have to review sig figs, they're at the beginning of your journal. Okay. 10 grams of aluminum. All right, the next problem. We've got 0 0.8 grams of magnesium. We're heading to Mole Town. So we're starting in Graham Land this time. We're heading to Mole Town. So we would put our grams of magnesium, create our railroad tracks, bring those words down to the right, end with moles on top. Okay. Once again, the definition of, 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 or the relationship between mass and moles is the molar mass. One mole is equal to its molar mass on the periodic table. So this one, for calculator help, just to kind of emphasize what I was trying to show you guys earlier, you would type it in 0 0.8 times 1, push equals, sorry, I guess I should emphasize that's a 1. Okay, times one equals, and then we would say divide one, divide 24.31. Okay, so that's kind of what I was trying to show you earlier. And then push equals, okay? So why don't you make sure you can get that answer? 
on your calculator. Okay. Um, and this one, we only wanted one sig fig, so to change my answer to be sig fig savvy, we would say 0 0.03 moles of magnesium. And there we go. Okay. Okay, then you need to try example number five. Please be aware you only want one sig fig for your answer. So I will put that answer up front in just a second. Call me over if you need help with number five. Okay, so hopefully we've all had a chance to kind of start example five. Okay. So I'm going to just kind of run through it, just kind of see if you're in the same spot as me. So we have 0 0.8 moles of gold, which is AU, okay? I would bring my words down to the right, and I would end with grams of AU. And I know this relationship, or looking at the map off to the right, I know that I'm gonna say one mole of gold is its molar mass, which I believe is 196.967. Because I'm a nerd. <laughs> I memorize things. I'm just kidding. I've been saying it all day. All right. <laughs> so, uh, so from here, that's kind of where we got to end. So you would multiply these two, divide by the one, which we know that we can kind of ignore that. Um, and so you should end up with, I think the answer we got earlier was, was a 157.573. But this has one significant figure. So if I'm going to change it to be one significant figure, you go across the number. You're going to underline your first significant figure. So I found that. Check the guy behind it. Okay. That rounds it up or stays the same? No. Rounds it up. So we're going to go two. Yes. Then we're going to put zeros in for... So that was a terrible rounding. <laughs> but that's what we would do to make it have the right sig fix. Yay, I did it. I got that So good. One more second. So what I need you guys to do now, I'm not going to go over six and seven. You can look at that on your own. It's kind of pushing the two together. You're going through the mole. But on your homework page, it's both sides. I want you guys to do it. The way that I um, grade your homeworks is as long as you have all the work shown, um, if you don't have a calculator at home or if you're, you're not comfortable with your phone and turning it sideways and all that stuff, um, as long as you show me all the work, I give you the credit for the homework because those are usually participation, right? Um, and then on tests, as long as you show me all the work, you won't get the full credit, but you'll get most of it because that's what I'm looking for is all the work needs to be set up correctly. So work on the other worksheet until the bell, and that's all I got. Have a great weekend. So this is the homework, and both sides are going to be due on Monday. Again, just show your work, and you can come in and calculate it when you get into class.